Hello Stitchy friends, how are you all? This is Floss Tube number 31. It is Friday the 12th of April um, and thank you for joining me. New subscriber or regular visitor, whichever you might be, you're very welcome to be here and I hope you enjoy catching up with me. My name is Sally and I'm Flossy Sews and Grows here on YouTube and also on Instagram. So if you don't follow me over there and you'd like to see some of my stitching, go and have a little follow. This channel is predominantly about cross stitch, but I sometimes do show other crafts, other things that I try and make, although a bit obsessed with cross stitch, so it seems to be mainly that right now. Um, but I also try and talk about my allotments when it's not underwater. The UK, we have just been having so much rain. Rain, rain, rain. Awful. I can remember this time in 2020, we'd just gone into lockdown for COVID and the weather was beautiful. We used to sit outside every afternoon, Simon and I, at the front of the house, got a bench at the front and we just watched the world go by and people walking and kind of wave. And it was beautiful. The weather was so nice <laughs> this year. Uh, it hasn't it hasn't stopped. It's been torrential. And obviously we have chickens who are out in our garden and it is just a mud bath. It's an absolute mud bath. So, yes, we haven't even been over to the allotment yet because we have had friends who've been and taken pictures of just it, it underwater. There's just been so much rain. Uh, we are in around an area of Wales where we've got quite heavy clay soil, so the water does tend to to sit on the top um, and not really sink down too quickly. So you know, certainly at the allotment we try and spend a lot of time digging in um, really good soil and leaf mould and things like that to try and break up the clay a little bit, but you know it's an ongoing battle. So anyway it's a it's a day off for me today it's my day off friday feeling good feeling really good and um hopefully after this i can get on and do a bit of stitching i've got a few kind of creative ideas in mind that i'd like to do this afternoon so first of all just wanted to say thank you for all the shout outs that i've had from other floss tubers there's been a lot going on with um all us uk floss tubers shouting each other out which has been wonderful um, thank you to Stitchy Rach and to Stitchy Sally who I'm stitching things with them at the moment so they've both mentioned me but also a big thank you to Michelle of Mama Loves You GB who mentioned me in her Easter UK Floss Tubers Parade and if you haven't seen on Instagram she's been doing a bit of a UK cross stitchers conga for you for, to join in um, so for floss tubers, for stitchers, for anyone with a shop or an Etsy, um, go over and have a look at her post and if your favourite UK stitcher or stitchy friend isn't already in that link, give them a little mention. So it's really good, really, really supportive community um, over here and of course across the pond, you know, we, we love our friends over, over in the States because there's a lot of you. I think I'm probably... I think when I checked my stats last time, about 35% or 40% of my viewers are American. So hi across the pond, thank you for coming and joining me. So it's been two weeks since I last checked in with you. How have I been getting on with my 50 new starts that I'm doing with Sarah of So Me Sarah to celebrate us turning 50 this year? I'll catch you up on that. Um, I have the results of the fabulous giveaway for the fabulous bag that Pauline at Sobe Bags sent me to share with you. So we'll we'll do that a bit, little bit later on. And yeah, so where do we start? Fully finished objects, I think. I had one that I didn't quite finish. I'd finished it by the last time I spoke to you, but I couldn't show it to you because it was um, on its way across the pond to the lovely Catherine. And I'd done an exchange with the Stitch Across the Pond chat group. So Marie at Stitches and Diamonds and Andy, who's the tiny house stitcher. Marie, obviously, here in Wales and Andy over in California. Um, 
have set up a, a, an across the pond stitch group. Uh, there's a Zoom once a month. There's one Saturday night. So I'm very excited because uh, I haven't, I didn't manage to get on the last one. So I'm really pleased to have got on this one. So monthly Zoom and there's a Facebook group. And Angie this time, I think with some encouragement from Roz, uh, Roz Clark, decided that they set up a, a spring exchange and um, I got the lovely Catherine over in California who her Instagram and floss tube is stitching in costume. Let me just double check that. I wrote it down. Stitching in costume. Yes. And um, oh, I felt I watched Catherine's floss tube and looked at her Instagram. Catherine is the most beautiful stitcher and you'll see later on I will show you what I was gifted from Catherine. I felt such a lot of pressure in what I was going to to give to her. It was really, really quite ah. um she's a big sampler stitcher, does lots of blackbird, and so I thought well, I need to do something. I want to do something different, something that she hasn't got. And um I actually had something already in my stitchy box of things that needed to be finished and I had a look through that and I found something that I just thought was absolutely perfect and I hadn't fully finished it so I needed to do that so this is what I did show you a little picture here so this is queen bee from barbara anna and I stitched this on a 40 count raw linen um, and then I finished it on a little board from Hobbycraft with some fabric. Now the bee fabric, I'm not sure where I got that from. I've had that in my stash for a while, but I just thought it went perfectly. Um, and there, there was just something about about the, the queen bee. I think it was the hair. Catherine's got long hair and um, from her floss tube, you can guess, stitching in costume. She makes the most wonderful um, costumes from bygone eras and I don't know there was just she has long hair and there was just something about the the hair on the on the queen bee that I just thought that's it that is that is what I want to gift Catherine so um that went across to the states and I think it was received just as I was doing my previous floss tube so this is the first opportunity I have to share it but I was I was absolutely thrilled with the finish I thought it looked really really good and um I sent um quite a few bee themed um things with it for Catherine so um and we've had some lovely messages back backwards and forwards and as I said I'll show you what I received from, from Catherine later didn't have any other fully finished objects but that pile is getting bigger because of course um there's some finishes now I am there was one last weekend I was a little bit grumpy a little bit grumpy with my family my poor family um it was my you know I'd been working all week and it was Easter holidays my other half is a teacher obviously my daughter was off school she had revision to do he had um, some decorating that he wanted to get done and I thought well when I'm working they can get all these things done no they decided to leave it until you know, the last weekend just before they were all going back to school on the Monday. So on the Saturday, I was like, well, I'm a bit cross because I thought we could go out for the day today. But no, somebody has to revise for a test in school. And then someone else is having to finish off the painting and the decorating because it hasn't been done. And we both had two weeks to do it. And my other half just looked at me and said, we're very, very sorry. Go up to your stitching room and stitch. I went, oh, I'm going to. So I got the bit between my teeth in my grumpiness <laughs> and I finished this. So this is Moonshine Cabin by Modern Folk Embroidery. I love it. I was really inspired to stitch this by um, Charlie, Stitches, Stitches with Charlie Feathers and Stitchy Sally. Charlie had already done it and then Sally did a stitch along, which I joined in. And yes, this is my oldest whip because I think I started it in November or December 2022, maybe. So I was stitching it all of last year. <clears throat> now I've stitched it on a 32 count fabric. I think this is chalkboard by 
uh, witch out permin witch out um because it's quite stiff it's not as soft as Svigar, so I think that's what it is, and it's 32 count, and I did stitch it um, over one, uh, one over two. So I, it's really delicate, um, and I think I said to you last time I showed it to you, one of these trees isn't quite right, so it's not symmetrical, but can you see it? No, I can't. Um, so I'm not too, too worried about that. I think... I'm still debating whether to frame it, um, similarly to how Carolina Evertotes has done hers, or actually I think it would look lovely in just a simple, simple wooden frame. And I've got, I haven't got any of this size, but they're quite easy for to get for just for framing purposes. So debating, debating how to finish it. And then my other finish, this beauty and this is home sweet home this is by scattered seed samplers and i've stitched this on 36 count country vintage mocha with the call for dmc and again i've stitched it one over two and i was stitching this i did a start along with my friend elaine who is ellie welly stitcher and we stitched this together and I was going to, I did quite a lot on it and I wasn't far off a finish and thought well, I might leave it for, I've got a train journey next week. It's five hours there, five hours back. So I might leave it for my train stitch because I can see the 36 count without it you know, quite easily if the, if the light's not great. Um, so I'd leave it for the train. And then I just thought, actually, there's not that much to do. There's, there's other things that I can take, which will be better to stitch on the train. So not, not that much to do. So I sat down and started to stitch it. And as I sat down, um, Elaine released a floss tube, which I then sat and watched her and she'd finished it. So that was it then. I was determined that I was going to finish that one as well. So those were my two finishes for the last two weeks. I have also had a start, so as you all are aware, um, I am doing hashtag fun for 50 Sal uh, with So Me Sarah and we are starting 50 new projects this year to celebrate us turning 50. So this one was, oh I can't remember what number what this one was, was it number 19? Um, let me quickly tell you what it was. Because I lose, I'm losing count. I am really, really losing count. Yes, it was number 19. So, number nine, start number 19 was Little House Needleworks. And this is Schoolgirl Lessons. And it's a really nice little tiny one. I'm stitching it on. Here we go. I'm stitching it on a 40 count mystery linen. Isn't it cute? And I'm stitching it with Roxy Floss Co Merlot, which is gorgeous, gorgeous red. So really enjoying that so far. Um, I think so. There's quite a few people who are stitching this along with us. Quite a few people have this in their stash already. So obviously Sarah is stitching it, and Sarah is stitching it on 46 count. Crazy. Um, but actually, she's. We did have a prompt from you, lovely viewers, have given us prompts to try and work our, uh, give us ideas and work our our projects around. And somebody had suggested that we stitch on a small account than usual so my the smallest I've stitched on is 40 so 46 will be my next one as well and actually I probably should have done this one on 46 as well because it's so small and so if I struggled it wouldn't be a huge huge problem um, but I think I'm going to have to find an equally small chart to try 46 on at some point but I want to I do want to so that was my um, that was only my actually my only new start in the last two weeks it seems that this month all my other new starts have fallen into the second half of the month so I will have to show you those at the end of April um but just yes the other people that are stitching along with us 
Uh, Cross Stitch Sarah, she has already started. And I know Rebecca at on Instagram at Lofty Makes. She's just bought the pattern and that's arrived. So she's going to stitch with us. Um, just so Sherry went and bought the pattern as well. And she started, I think she started yesterday and she's doing it on with um, a sulky thread, which is the most gorgeous colour. Absolutely love it. So go and have a look at her Instagram because she's got a photo on there. Um, I know a couple of other people I think had mentioned that they were going to start with us. Um, so just make sure if you are stitching along, tag us both in so that we can see your starts and as well as using the hashtag because we can't, or the hashtag doesn't always show up so it's much better to tag us so we can see see that you're joining in. Um, so that was that was my start. I then also, I've done quite a lot on my whips. I've managed to get quite a bit done. So I've now only got two whips that I haven't started this year. One which is quite small and I'll need to get finished and I can do that. But my other one is a bit of a biggie. And it is Remember Me by Teresa Coget. And I hadn't, I don't think I'd stitched on this last, last month. So haven't really made much progress. But, and it, you might look at it now and go, oh, you really, you haven't made much progress still. But I, I feel like I have. I was determined to try and get this house finished. So I think I have got a picture of this the last time I showed, showed it to you. Um, I'll pop it up if I have. Um, I think it's the only picture that I've got that I took before I started stitching on stuff. So I think I have got it. But I was determined I was going to get this house finished and get the house filled in. And it's it's a real beast. It is a real beast of a house because it has got quite an intricate pattern. Um, and I've, I've nearly done. But one thing I did do, I got this roof done. So on Easter Monday, my partners, both, one of his sons came and stayed with us for the weekend. He had a wedding to go to locally. We won't talk about the doorbell going at five o'clock in the morning after he walked home, after he refused a lift at midnight from his father. We won't mention that. Um, and his other son came and visited on the Monday with his girlfriend and we just um, we were going to go out for a walk. We had a you know plan to have some fresh air after eating lots of chocolate, and it was raining. So we sat and had tea and cakes, and um, I was very rude and sat and stitched. <laughs> and, and I got that I got most of that roof, most of that roof stitched. So actually, that's quite quite a big quite a big job. This is on a forty count fabric it's vintage cream it's a zweigart and i'm stitching this with the called for dmcs and there are two fancy flosses in there as well which i'm using so and then i did get i did get this i think got that bird done not done but started so slow but steady slow but steady i think is is the, the one with that um it's coming it's coming along next I have my mandala rooster. I'll put a picture up of it, what it will look like when it's done. And it's in my lovely chicken bag. And here we are so far. So this is Man mandala rooster from Maloka Designs. And this was a freebie that Megan sent out to her subscribers. And of course, I couldn't resist because it's a chicken. It is a rooster, a cockerel, but um, I still really liked it. And I thought it would look great on our chicken wall. Not that there's really much on our chicken wall yet, but there's because there's lots being stitched. So here it is. Now, it doesn't look like I've made a huge amount of progress. Um, I don't think I took a picture of this last time. Thanks. I'm, I am I am really enjoying this. It's stitched on a 36 count Zweigart white and I'm stitching it with the called for threads apart from one, the red here of his comb. 
um, and wattles. Couldn't remember those last time I spoke to you. Um, I didn't have that colour and I've substituted it with 666, a kind of bit of a bright, brighter red. So they stood out a little bit more. Um, really enjoying this, uh, but I'm not finding it an easy stitch. I think just um, with the colour changes, I stitch from paper. I stitch from patterns, you know, I buy patterns or if I buy, get a PDF or if I get a freebie, I will print it out. And um, I think probably with this one, if I was using Pattern Keeper, I probably would find it a lot easier. But I think because I'm using paper and I'm, I've am i printed it in colour as well, um, I'm finding it a little bit slow going. I'm really enjoying it, but I'm, I'm finding it quite slow with lots of colour changes and um, but it's it's really fun. It's really, really fun. And I think Mr. Rooster is going to look brilliant on our chicken wall when he is done. And I like to think he's not going to take too much longer, but he seems to be taking time for me, for me. Seems to be stitching that one slowly. Next up, oh, I'm loving this one. I'm absolutely loving this one. This is Gathering Strawberries and it's by Annie B's Folk Art. I'm really enjoying it. Really, really enjoying it. Um, I've left this in the Nerd Hoop, which is a bit naughty. I think the last time you saw it, I had, I'd, I'd done, or I'd done about as much of the border here as I've done, but now I've come down to do this big pot, pot of strawberries. There's going to be strawberries all here. I've just realised I've had a new phone and I don't think I really know where I'm supposed to be looking for the camera and I think I'm probably looking off in different directions. So please, if you're not getting very good eye contact from me, I'm very sorry. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to be looking. I need a big sticker of look here. <laughs> but anyway, so um, yeah, so I've, I've managed to get this, the, the green, the green pot, green greenery coming out of the pot and there'll be strawberries here now and then I've stitched the outline of the pot here because this will be a train stitch next week when I'm on the train. It's on a 32 count even weave and it's what from the spring collection from last year from 2023 from Tom and Lily Creations and I, I'm really enjoying stitching it. I am stitching one over two as usual. I really like stitching with one strand not two. My preference just I like I like how the stitches sit I like how it feels I like how it looks when I finished um but it, sometimes on 32 count it's a little bit loose and a little bit it's it's not quite right but this seems to be probably because it's been dyed it's a little bit tighter and it just ugh, it's really lovely to stitch on so I've outlined the um part so that I can fill that in on the train and I think probably I'll try and get up and do the girl and outline her dress so I can perhaps do that on the train as well. But really loving it, really, really loving it. I'm stitching it with, it's a mix of DMC, Classic Colour Works, and then there's a couple of Weeks Dye Works in there as well. And I'm stitching it all with the called for for that so a, mi a mix of all of them um but i will change i think i've said to you before there's a flower there i'm going to make that into another chicken because we did have four chickens and i would like them all to be all to be on there so really enjoying that one as well and that's in my 50 bag that the lovely ros clark at ros clark crafts made for me Next whip, hmm, maybe not going quite as well as I had hoped. This is Barbara Anna Designs and it is Garden of Dreams and I'm stitching this with the lovely Stitchy Sally on our Wednesday night Barbara Anna stitch, Stitchy Evenings. And I'm stitching this, again, really lovely, 32 count even wee fabric, stitching one over two. It looks great and I think you'll th see that the coverage is just amazing. This is a fabric, so this was a fabric of the month from Fabrics by Crafty Kate last year and usually I get 36 count linen, 
but in actual fact, I saw the even weave. Kate sends a, an email out at the beginning of the month with what the Ada even weave and linen looks like. And the even weave was just a completely, you know, this really subtle green. And I just thought, God, no dreams. And then I did order the linen of, as well, obviously, which I haven't yet used, but I'm sure that will come in Halloween, maybe. Um, so gorgeous to stitch. However, Wednesday, my usual stitchy night, I knew I'd made a mistake. I knew that this was coming up and it wasn't sitting right with her hair. So I knew I'd made a mistake. Didn't have a great day on Wednesday. I had a bit of a headache. Got to, sat down and just thought, I can't do it. I've made a mistake. And I think I've made a mistake. So you can just see I'm missing a stitch here. I've made a mistake somewhere with her face that I've then wanted, I've wanted to change thread. I've wanted to do something other than her face or her hair. And I've come across to here, but actually this now, when her hair comes down, there should be one, one stitch space and there won't be. So I need to have a really good think about whether I can fudge her, the side of her face here or whether I need to take all of that out and move it across. Couldn't think that on Wednesday night and I just thought I'm not going to do it and I put it down and I stitched something else. And yeah, I think I'm going to try and figure out before Wednesday when I'm on my long train trip what I need to do and if I need to rip all of this out I'll do it on the train. Um, yeah. But I'm going to see if I can figure it that I can perhaps, I might just have to, I don't know, need to have a really good think and have a look at it. So, yeah, <laughs> it happens, doesn't it? It happens to us all. You know, I find, um, you know, I will make mistakes. Uh, you don't realise you made a mistake. You don't realise. But sometimes if I'm tired or if I'm distracted, um, you know, there's, there's life going on around me and I have to kind of keep looking up and down. And you don't count properly. It happens. It happens. Happens to all of us. Um, yeah. All been there. All done it, haven't we? So... I'm a little bit disappointed, a little bit, but because there's quite a lot to frog if I have to decide that that might be the, uh, the easiest thing to do. I don't know. So we'll see. So I just need to sit down. I might do that this afternoon, actually, sit down, have a really good think. Can I frog or do I need to pull it out? And then I'll pull it out on Wednesday on the train and try and restitch it. Yeah. So that was Barbarana. My next whip, which is in a lovely, my lovely, lovely other chicken bag by Pauline from Sobe Bags. My other whip is Easy Peckings. And this is um, from Cosford Rise Stitchery, designed by Kelly, who I met at Stitch in London. And I'm stitching this along with my friend Rachel, who is Stitchy Rach. And here is my progress so far. So, not a bad start. Um, started on the bottom of this chicken and then this is the cockerel's kind of head, the start of his body and then some of the fence. And um, I watched, watched Rachel last weekend and she said, oh, Sally, Sally said that she's, she's already on the second chicken, so she's racing away. But I didn't tell her, I hadn't actually stitched the first one yet I just decided I needed a bit of a break from the from the cream white of this one and I'd moved on to to do a bit of that one so really lovely so far I'm stitching it with the called for well I'm stitching it it was called for um what are they classic colour works a mix of classic colour works and gentle arts 
Um, but Kelly also does give a DMC conversion. So what I'm doing is I'm actually stitching a bit of a mix. I think, um, yeah, so I've got most most of the fancy flosses I'm using on that, but there were just a couple of occasions where I couldn't either get the fancy floss um, or... Yeah, I think I think bean sprout, the green, there's just um there's just the littlest bit of grass over here and I just thought haven't got the colour, got the DMC. There's not many stitches there, so it will be fine. So that's another enjoyable one. Um I haven't stitched on this for probably about a week or so, so I think that this one might get pulled out over the weekend. Um Although actually saying that, I have got a busy weekend. It is Cheshire Stitchers tomorrow, which should be absolutely fantastic. Um, Elaine, who is Ellie Welly Stitcher, obviously she's now moved up to Wales and we decided we were going to have a meet up one weekend after Easter. And we talked about Abacan and then Elaine said, actually, I have thought I might come to Cheshire Stitchers. So tomorrow... Um, she's coming to me first and then we're going to Cheshire Stitchers together which Cheshire Stitchers is a group of stitchers from North Wales, Chester, the Wirral um, I think we have another friend who might be hopefully coming down from Manchester to join us um, who a lot of you know and I'm not going to say just in case you can't make it um, so when we meet at a pub called the Horns Mill in Helsby on the 2nd Saturday of the month. Lovely, lovely group of stitchers um, and there is a Facebook page so if you're local and you'd like to come and join the group find the Facebook page. I think it's private so you might have to ask for ask to join but it's a really lovely group of admin who are very welcoming so um, there shouldn't be as long as you're a stitcher and you're genuine there shouldn't be a, an issue with that. So it's Cheshire Stitchers tomorrow um, and then obviously I've got stitch stitch across the pond in the evening and I've got a big start planned for tomorrow um, so that was my whips my plans <laughs> can you remember stitching I'm going to start this tomorrow because it is the birthday of the lovely Alex who is at Alex this is the one I didn't write down and again I my brain has gone to mush. As I've got <laughs> filming on new phone, I've still got old phone. This is really handy. I should um, I should do this every issue, every every issue, every time I talk to you, you have a spare phone with me. But unfortunately, uh, my daughter has claimed this one already because hers is quite broken. So it's Stitch Alex Ong on Instagram. So it's Alex's birthday tomorrow. So in advance. Just in case, because it's a busy day, I don't get a chance to, to wish you a happy birthday tomorrow, Alex. Happy birthday. Hope you have a really lovely day. Um, I know that you're, you're going to have a bit of downtime and a bit of stitching time. So I um, hope you enjoy it. So our start for tomorrow is Spring Quaker. And we are stitching this with a hashtag of Spring Quaker Birthday Sal because obviously it's Alex's birthday and also it's part of my 50 for my fun for 50 for my birthday for this year. So we thought that was a really good hashtag. So there are quite a few people who are stitching along with us on this and I haven't written them down on this what this for this episode because I thought I could talk to you about some of those stitches next time when everyone will have started and can talk about the different colours that everybody's stitching on, the different fabrics, the different themes. Um, my other plans for the rest of the month then are Itch to Stitch, which I think is going to be a train stitch, and also um, Friends and the Flowers of Life. I was going to start this one at the beginning of the month and I didn't. That's one by Friends of Flowers. That's one by um, Lucy Bean. So probably both of those might be started before the train. Maybe do some outlining, see how far I can get. We'll see. So part of the um, 50 for 50 stitch along that Sarah and I are doing, what we are 
what we do is the middle of each month we share with you what we are going to stitch the month after. So going to show share with you the plans for May so that um, you know what we're going to be stitching and if you want to join in with this you can. So my plans for May I have a few smalls and then I have a big one. I have another big one. Um, so my first plan for May is Hand in Heart Blooming Tiny Town. Now I'm going to stitch this as a stitch along with Nadine, my friend who is nads underscore x stitch on Instagram and on Floss Tube. Nadine is a real prolific stitcher. She stitches such a variety of, of things and she knits and yeah, absolutely fantastic. So if you haven't watched her Floss Tube or you don't follow her on Instagram, go and have a look. So we are going to start this. We decided to start this on the 4th of May because that is a bank holiday here in the UK. It's the first kind of May bank holiday. We get two. We get one at the end of the month as well. So we have a Monday off and it means we get a longer weekend. Now, Blooming Tiny Town, it just screams summer to me and sunshine. And so because it's a bank holiday, I'm really hoping it's going to be nice and it's going to be sunny. I have a feeling it won't be traditionally in the UK when we have a bank holiday the weather's rubbish we'll see um, and there is a prompt for this one so my prompt for this one I have gone to um, Sarah from Sarah's Stitchy Spot and her prompt that she gave Swami Sarah and I was to stitch something or stitch a house that reminds you of your childhood. Now, I really struggle to find a pattern with a house, with a specific house that reminded me of my childhood house or my childhood home um, here in the UK. Now, I had a year in America living in Kansas City, Missouri, when I was... It was the end of sixth grade elementary school and the start of seventh grade and junior high because that's that's the schooling I had when I was over there and um, had a really good year. My dad had a job with General Motors. Um, so we all as a family went over to the States. And I think probably what I thought about this, these houses are not British houses. And I thought, that you know, Celia from Heart in Hand is American, so I just thought these are more American houses, and it kind of reminded me of the different colourful houses that were around us when we lived in Kansas City, um, and the, the style of them was much more what you would see there than we see here, and I just thought, yep, that that will do for me. So thank you, Sarah, for that prompt, and I'm I think I'm I've done. So I've done Honey of Your Tiny Town. What's the other? Have I done just Honey of the Tiny Town or have I done another one as well? Can't remember. Um, but I do I do love the tiny towns and I've got Frosty Frosty Tiny Town to stitch later in the year. So hopefully there'll be a few of you joining me on that one. So that one is going to be a 4th of May start. Um, Big Chicken, Little Chicken Pin Keep from Stacey Nash. I think this was, I either got this from Market last year or Kate gifted me this for Christmas on my birthday, I can't remember, um, but little chicken, big chicken pin keep there is. So I'm not gonna stitch this as a pin, as a pin keep. I'm going to stitch it as a picture. There is also that on the back, that is the bottom of the pin keep. So that's the big chicken and that's the little chicken. At the moment, I'm just going to stitch the big one and I'm not sure that I'll do the border. I think I'll just do it. Um, I'll see the size of it, um, whether it can then go in a hoop or a frame to go on the chicken wall, which is why I'm not going to do it as a pin keep. So for the prompt for this, I used, used a prompt that was given to us by Karen at Christmas. And Karen 
her prompt was stitch something that reminds you of a loved one. Now we have a chicken, a white chicken called Snow, who this reminds me of. And, you know, really the chickens were bought for Felicity for my daughter. So it does really remind me of Felicity. So I thought that was a great prompt. The... Oh, now this is another one. This is one that Sarah and I are stitching together. So hopefully quite a few of you can join in. And we are stitching from, we were both kindly gifted this book by our friend Roz, who is at Roz Clark, at Roz Clark Crafts. And it's um, In Friendship's Way by Blackbird Designs. And Sarah and I had a chat earlier in the week. We had something different planned for due, for May, actually. And... Um, something that neither of us actually were kind of when we came to it were particularly worried about or particularly felt we kind of had to wanted to stitch there and then so we said oh what could we do instead and I said oh why don't we do a strawberry from this book because they're not very big so we are going to stitch Mildred's strawberry I'm just covering that up so you can't see the chart and this is this is what it looks like and it's quite small it is uh 29 by 42 stitches so that should be a really quick and easy one for sarah and i to both get under our belts so we're going to start that on monday the 20th of may i'm going to completely change the colors in mine i might go a bit crazy with the fabric as well we'll see um, but it's in, in kind of browns and a dark blue and I think a butterfly needs to be really colourful. So we're going to stitch that on, yeah, Monday the 20th of May. And the prompt for that was to stitch something with the letter, first letter being the same as the first letter of the month that we're stitching in. So it's May and it's Mildred Strawberry. So that came from... Um, just checking my notes, Jane Copeland gave us that prompt. So that is another great prompt for another new start. Then this is the biggie. This is the biggie. And can't wait. Can't wait. So With Thy Hands by Teresa Cogert. Stitchy Sally started this as one of her six for 60 and Elaine, Ellie Welly Stitcher, st started it with her. I couldn't at the time get the pattern but then I managed to get it from Jeff P. Smith on eBay when um, Jeff and Trudy went to Nashville for Needlework Market. This was one that they bought back and um, I snapped it up as soon as I saw that they had it on sale. Um, can't wait to start it. Sally and Elaine are both making great progress on it. I'll never catch up, but um, it's another biggie for the year. And really looking forward to starting that. I haven't got a, a start date for, for it yet. Um, but if you think if you've got it and you would like to start it with me, please do drop me a message and we'll, we can put a date in that works for both of us. Um, or both of us, if it's just one of you, if there's a few of you, well, we'll try and come up with a date that works. Um, so if you'd like to stitch that with me, just drop me a message either on my email, which is below or Instagram. Instagram Messenger is probably easier. The theme for that one, the prompt for that one, came from Roz. <laughs> Roz, you get lots of mentions this week. Um, from um, Roz Clark and R Roz had prompt, given us a prompt of stitch something with a stitchy theme. So this is definitely... Um, oh, oh, and I just thought someone else had said one with scissors. So that's, that's two prompts I can get in that because the scissors in there, I didn't think. So there we go. I can't, I'll, I'll have to mention that on the next video, who who suggested scissors. And yeah, so that at the moment, there's four, four plans for May. Never know if that might change. There are times when things just come along out of the blue that need to be started. And I do start them. For June, um... Sarah and I have already planned what we're going to stitch together for June and we're going to stitch a freebie and we're going to stitch a Barbara and a freebie so we thought we'll mention it now so it gives everybody time to um, get on board 
find it, print it off, kit it up if you'd like to join in. So for June, we are both going to stitch Light by Barbara Anna. So it's a freebie. You can get it, I think, off her website. So go and have a look if you'd like to stitch that with us. And I have to say, I was really enabled. Um, the other one that I have decided I'm going to stitch in June, which I thought I'd tell you about in case you wanted to join with me, if you wanted to go and buy this, is Summer Bouquet from Yaz at Yasmin's Made With Love. I love this. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm really, I'm really enjoying starting to stitch things are more summery, which are brighter. Um, you know, this time of year when all it is is rain here at the moment, it's really good to be having some bright, nice things to stitch um, before before the Christmas and July stuff starts. So this is going to be my one of my June stitches. Um, you... Yasmin now has her own website and I'll try and remember to link that below um, which you can buy hard copy copies from and she does have some things on her Etsy but I think she's trying to move away a little bit from Etsy because they do charge you know quite high fees um, so go and check out Yasmin's website if you would like to stitch this with me so summer bouquet and it's actually it's on the model is stitched on 32 count beautiful um, by fabrics by crafty kate and actually i'm stitching um i've got a fat quarter of beautiful which i'm stitching spring quaker on and i've i've charted it out that i think i'm going to have a bit left so i think uh, once i get started on that i'll know when kind of how much i've got that i can not massive this it's 100 101 by 71 stitches so it's not a massive one and it's charted in dmc um which i think i've already checked i've got most of so um yeah so that's a june one if you'd like to come and join me wonderful so those are my plans for may and june um mum stitch i have a stitch from mum this week now this one um I, I don't know how old this is and um, I didn't I thought I'm not I've never seen the chart but here we go it is red bow shoe because actually I have now found um, or I found on Vinted someone was selling the chart I didn't buy it because I didn't need to because I've already had it stitched for me um, but this was designed this was from Maria Kelly Designs so fabulous shoe there that mum stitched for me she stitched that on ada um i'd say i can't tell what counts it is i'm not very i don't stitch on ada so i'm not very um probably 14 probably 14 i would 14 or 16 i would say but great and I've, i keep that in a cabinet downstairs so that's a stitch from mum no year on it, no messages, no messages from dad this time. Um, but it was framed, it was framed from, by a company that, that has now unfortunately closed. They did some really good stuff and I think mum kind of used them mainly in the kind of mid to late 90s. So I would say I probably got this in my kind of early 20s. But a lovely stitch from mum, lovely, lovely stitch from mum stitchy kindness it's been a great couple of weeks for stitchy kindness let me just move move the ironing board was absolutely heaving it's, it's it was it was kind of started down here and it's kind of gone right 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 to the way along so stitchy kindness has just been spectacular this this past month um I don't know where to start I don't know where to start but I'm going to start with this so um I got so when I finished the four seasons um a lovely lady messaged me and said oh um can I buy the chart off you because obviously I can't buy it because you can't get things from Russia at the moment and I said well I was gifted it so um I'm, I'm not going to sell it um so you know, I was going, I was planning on doing it as a giveaway on here. And she, and she said, oh, well, I'd really like it. How about I send you some charts 
in return that you can give away on your channel. I was like, fantastic, that, that sounds good to me. So Four Seasons has gone off to the lovely Lynn and lovely Lynn sent me a couple of charts, which um, I might stitch one of them before I give it away. So Lynn sent me a lo lovely little card just to say thank you, because I think she just really wanted to stitch the Four Seasons and was having a real struggle, obviously, to get it. So um, the first one Lynn sent me was Cottage Garden Sampling's Greenhouse. Now, I'm in two minds about this. I think it's lovely, but I'm not sure if I want to stitch it. And I don't think Lynn had stitched it. I think she was maybe on a on an auto ship for this for the series, and that was one she didn't want to stitch. But I do really like some of the little flowers in there. So I'm just debating before I do it as a giveaway whether just to stitch. You know, some of those flowers flowers would be lovely for for cards or maybe just on little hoops. Just the flower stitched on a little hoop. So I might do that one. And then the other one that Lynn sent me was Feast of Friendship by Blackbird Designs. Now, this is one that I had my eye on. And I think, again, um, Jordan, the tattooed stitcher, has been stitching this. And it looks absolutely fantastic. So I will give this away at some point, but I'm going to stitch it first. So whether I do it this autumn, because it's certainly quite autumn-y. The colours are quite autumn-y. It's got that pumpkin and it's got that big house. So, um, yeah, so probably stitch this one first and then give it away. And this one, still debating because um, I do like those flowers. Some other stitchy kindness. So I was really, I was quite pleased. The door went just as I was starting to set up and there was a parcel for me. And I had had a little win on Instagram this week. And it's a little win from a lady called Claire at the Mossy Nook. And Claire makes things from felt and I won these two little to toadstools. And they are well, absolutely beautiful. They're really quite big. <clears throat> Excuse me. I didn't think from the picture that they were as big as they are, but they are going to make. I messaged Claire to say thank you when she announced that I'd won. And um, I said, they're just going to make beautiful little um, you know, little scenes with my with my autumn stitching or, you know, when I'm when I'm doing photos on Instagram, you know, they're really going to come in handy. And she said people even decorate with them at Christmas and put them on their Christmas trees. So I just and purple is my favourite colour. I love purple. So it's coming across a little bit pink, I think, maybe on the camera, but just I absolutely love those. So thank you, Claire. Absolutely thrilled to have won those. And I think thank you to my friend Paula who um, tagged me in um, to, to the competition. So absolutely gorgeous. So if you're interested in, in them, that's the Mossy Nook and Claire is on Instagram. So absolutely just in love with those. Absolutely gorgeous told stools. I think Claire makes lots of other other kind of felty, felty, lovely stuff. So then, oh, the absolute piece de resistance, my package from, from across the pond from Catherine. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, so first of all, I have this lovely hands across the sea samplers card from Catherine with my parcel. And then... my little my exchange gift how beautiful is that so you can see she's put my initials up there she's put over one she stitched 2024 absolutely gorgeous pinks i love pinks purpley pinks are my kind of favorite colors you can see she's done just such beautiful stitching now this is a blackbird pattern and I have it's not one that I've got it's not a booklet that I've got but I have seen somebody show it on floss tube and you know my brain pff, it's gone now I didn't write it down at the time so I forgot but I'm absolutely thank you Catherine absolutely thrilled absolutely thrilled with this so that was a wonderful exchange gift but you know it didn't end there there was also some some stitchy gifts and sorry for the crinkling but 
So Catherine also sent me um, Scattered Seed Samplers Catherine Dickinson 1840 pattern, which is gorgeous. I love the bird on that. See that bird there and those flowers. Um, some beautiful fat quarter of some gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. Lovely kind of neutrally kind of pinky brown colour. Now this is from a company called Those Missing Stitches, which I know is run by a, so this is a, a friend of Catherine's who dyes fabric um, over in California. So this Those Missing Stitches and she's definitely on Instagram and on Etsy. So go and have a look if you're interested and probably in the States. So absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. It didn't end there. Now, I haven't stitched with silk before. <laughs> and I'd said, I think we'd had to put on the form, um, you know, what our favourite colours were. And Catherine really did note this. that I'd said pinks and purples because she sent me um, two silks from Silks For You in a purple and a pink. How gorgeous are those? So I cannot wait. I don't know what I'm going to stitch with them yet, but I can't wait to try them. Absolutely can't wait. Um, some pins. It was quite funny, actually, because when I saw that, I thought, oh, all the bee-themed things that I'd sent for Catherine. That would have been perfect for her. And some little thread drops, again with a bee. And a library book, little envelope. Again, I think I spoke last week, didn't I, about how um, how important it is to put a note, put your name, put the date on the back of your stitching so that your family can see it in years to come. So that's a really good little little thing to, to be able to use to put on the back. And then, and then some lovely, um, some of Catherine's floss drops. So she's stitching in costume and actually her Instagram is at Trin Kitty. And she has some, she, we had the, we had a conversation um, about the, about gardens and the weather. And she sent me a beautiful picture of the sunshine in California in her garden. And I didn't dare send one back of the wet mud bath that was my garden. <laughs> and then a fabulous, I think my daughter, when she sees this, will, will probably steal it. And it was all in this beautiful project bag that I'm presuming Catherine had made with a little, little um, 2024 little tassel so absolutely so Catherine thank you so much just such generous generous gifts I loved everything that you sent it was an absolutely fantastic exchange and um well loved you over in California and I hope the sun's shining for you today I'm sure it probably is um, <laughs> and that you're managing to keep up with the garden um, but absolutely just, yeah, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful exchange. So thank you also to Angie at Tiny House Stitcher who organised that because, um, yeah, it was a tour. I messaged Angie when she when she she told me who my partner was or who my exchange partner was. I said, oh, goodness, you've given me such a good stitcher. I feel really quite, what am I going to do? Um, but it was wonderful. And yeah, it's been lovely to make a friend over in California. So thank you. Thank you, Catherine. So I have got... What else have I got? <sighs> a little bit of haul. <laughs> a little bit of haul. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. I did see, um, kind of been thinking um, of obviously things that are coming up um, soon of, of what I want to stitch on later in the year. Um, and I've got lots and lots of pieces of fabric, um, kind of 13 by 18 from my fabric of the month from Kate which is great because I stitch a lot of smalls, but there are a couple of bigger projects that I'm doing. Um, so I was just having a bit of a nose and I looked at Wool, well, well, blah, 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 Wool Warehouse and they had some Zweigart 35 count um, raw linen. I think they had a fat quarter and it was seven or eight pounds for a fat quarter of raw linen and I just thought oh well that's a bit of a bargain 
So I'm, I'm having me some of that. I don't know what I'll stitch on it, but a good old piece of, good old piece of, um, it's really versatile actually raw. I've stitched quite a lot on it actually. Um, lots of little kind of, you know, just bits and bobs. It's, it's quite a good, yeah. So don't know quite what that what, what I'll stitch with that. And the other thing I got from Wool Warehouse, I don't know. I have fallen in love with these little needles. Now they're diddy. They're absolutely diddy compared to. Let me just show you. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Uh, these are my kind of usual. I don't know why I'm doing this because you can't see, but. No, you can't see. But they, these little these little needles are absolutely diddy. And I don't know what it is about them. I really like stitching with a really small needle. Um because it's really good for when you're starting to really run out of thread to because they're tiny you can get the back so fabulous so i've got a couple of packets of those because um i find that that size that's a 28 a pony tapestry 28 and they're diddy if any of my friends um are seeing me at cheshire stitches and want to try such a tiny one give me a shout because i've got two packets and then this is slightly old haul because again this was um what I what I did with Catherine with my exchange, I very much wanted to um, send stuff to America for the exchange that was British, and things that perhaps were harder for her to get over over in the states, um, or perhaps she wouldn't get as easily because they're from from the UK. Um, and of course, so I sent her. She got um, some British, some Gisela Graham little bee decorations to go with her bee um stitch i also sent her a chart by yasmin um queen bee because i thought that was a great, a great bee one and um i also found got some liberty fabric and again just thought these were fantastic because they the colors went with the theme of everything that that i was sending and I got these so um, I couldn't just buy some for Catherine I had to get some for me as well and these are from um, So I Did in Nantwich now I've not ever been to the shop um, but the lady who owns the shop Dawn lives is the neighbour of one of my really really good friends who lives nearby and um, Dawn kindly I will message her or I'll message my friend and say what I'm looking for. And between them, they figure it out. And Anna goes in and buys it and I send, money, send Anna the money, etc, etc. And um, but just, you know, the fabric she has lots of. So this was Liberty fabric. And that's what I wanted to get specifically for Catherine, because um, obviously Liberty is British. And um, I had quite a few conversations with Dawn about what she had and what I could what I could do for Catherine um and these were these were the two in the end that we settled on um Dawn has just done a little um video on her Instagram of a tour of the shop so if you are at all crafty and you are in the Cheshire North Wales area go and have a look at the little video because she does um, she does such a variety of things. She has crochet stuff. She has quilting things. She has obviously quite a lot of fabric. And she now has started selling DMC because she has had quite a demand for it. I know that there's a group. Um, my friends, um, Chloe and Charlotte, both run groups in craft groups in Nantwich. One on a Saturday that Chloe does and one in, I think it's a Thursday evening that Charlotte does. So there's quite a, a thriving um, group of crafters in Nantwich. So I think the demand for DMC there has been quite high. So Dawn has listened to that and, and now has DMC in stock. But um, for those of you who might be going to, I think there's a Bee Stitchy Retreat at um, 
Winchwood Park this weekend and also the Chatelaine Retreat in June is also held at Winchwood Park and they are both they um Winchwood Park Hotel is really close to Nantwich so if you're coming up for either of those retreats if you're coming to the area for either of those retreats it's really well worth a visit to um so I did in Nantwich and Dawn is open Tuesday to Saturdays 10 till 4 and lots and lots of beautiful beautiful fabric so well worth a visit um we're nearly there we're nearly there one massive big thing still to come um just must mention somebody did win this chart on i think it was floss tube number 25 and they haven't come back to me yet so if you haven't watched floss tube number 25 and you entered the competition for floss tube number 24 um just go and have a watch to see who the winners were on that one and um yeah so that one is still to be claimed if it's not claimed by my next video it is going to go back into the um, giveaway pile because I will do a giveaway I think either when I get to 1500 subscribers or when I get to 2000 haven't quite decided yet we'll see what we have and whether we do a mini one at 1500 and then do another one at 2000 or just do a massive one at 2000 we'll see so Someone always likes to phone, don't they? That can... Where were we before the phone rang? The only person who rings me on my landline is my mum. So I knew who that's that's who it was going to be. So I couldn't ignore it. So I'm sorry. I've been gone about 20 minutes. For you, it's been about two seconds. So what were the last couple of things I wanted to say? So first of all, I have found a new floss tuber this morning. I think actually Michelle at Mama Loves You GB mentioned her... On her Easter UK floss tubers, but I hadn't noted it. Um, lovely lady called Keely, who is cakes and stitches, and she does quite a variety of different stitching. Um, she went to the Stitch in London sampler retreat in February, so she does a bit of samplers, but also other other things as well that a variety of stitches might be interested in. She hasn't got, got very much, many subscribers yet because she's still so new. So go and give her some love. So that is cakes and stitches. Last thing, last thing that I know you've all been waiting for is the results of the giveaway for this beautiful bunny bag, which was kindly gifted to me by Pauline from Sew Me Bags to give away to you lovely one of you lovely people and the winner bah, 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 is crazy nan 6910 so crazy nan if you would like to message me on instagram or send me an email my email address is below with your address and i can get this sent out to you so it's an absolutely beautiful 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 bag from pauline i'm very jealous i could have almost kept it but i dare not um so there we go so thank you thank you for joining in uh, today's or for watching today i feel like it's been a little bit disjointed i feel like i've waffled quite a lot but I know some of you don't mind that at all and it makes some of you giggle. So, um, me too. If you have enjoyed it, please do give me a little like. Please do subscribe. Um, it just, it means the world to know that people are joining, joining in, watching. And if you subscribe, you just get a little notification the next time that I film or I release a floss tube so that you know I'm there. Um, and you won't miss anything in my wonderful 2024 exciting adventure of lots of new starts. So thank you for joining me. I hope that you all have some sunshine and joy in your life and in your stitchy life over the next couple of weeks. I will be back at the end of April to give you an update on how I did in April. There'll be lots of new starts. Yeah, there's three, three more new starts that you'll see next time I come back to you. Never know if there might be some more. We'll see. Um, never say never. Have a great couple of weeks and happy stitching. See you soon. Bye.